It was a Crime Watch Daily exclusive on the ground in the Oregon rainforest to help a desperate mother search for her missing son. I look out at this forest and I just think, how are we ever gonna find him in this? Now, a year after we got involved, authorities have renewed the search. And Kyron's stepmom, the woman the family alleges is responsible for his disappearance, is headed to court for more reasons than one. The latest came just days ago when a man calling himself Terry's domestic partner filed a restraining order against the woman, claiming she held a knife to his face, then telling local news outlets, quote, I don't even know what she's capable of. It's the most recent development in a case that started many years ago. This is the last known picture of seven-year-old Kyron Horman, taken at his school by his stepmom, Terry, just minutes before he vanished. That was the day that my world fell apart. Time has done little to ease the pain of Kyron's biological mother, Desiree Young. What happened to Kyron on June 4th, 2010? He had a science fair at his school. And um, unfortunately, uh, I wasn't able to go. And his stepmom was going to take him to the science fair. The seven year old's disappearance triggered a massive search that captivated the nation. But even in those first agonizing days, Desiree, seen here being comforted by Terry, knew something was amiss. Desiree claims several people told her they saw Kyron leave with Terry Horman. He was in his classroom. He got the photo taken by Terry, and he apparently, according to eyewitness accounts, multiple adults that can vouch for the fact that Terry walked out the side entrance of the school with Kyron in tow. Terry denied that she ever left with Kyron. But scrutiny intensified when Desiree claims Terry reportedly failed two polygraphs. Who do you believe is responsible for Kyron's disappearance? Terry Horman, his stepmom. Terry has never been charged in the disappearance, and for years, no sign of Kyron. Then, on the fifth anniversary of his disappearance. Obviously, we're looking for skeletal remains. I joined over 50 volunteers to help search for clues. This is not just trying to find Kyron and bring him home. It's about making sure justice is done also. What are you hoping to find? Answers. <laughs> um. We know it. We think she did that day. It's hard for a mom to know that. It's my sweet little Kyron. And with that, our search began. After so much time, it seemed hopeless. But then, while our cameras were rolling, a volunteer cried out. Got the bone. What? Someone uncovered a bone. We gotta get somebody out here. Before long, a professional search and rescue team arrives on scene. Uh, it's about 10 and a half inches long. Potentially would be a femur if it was anything. <laughs> A team of cadaver dogs were called to the area soon after. But ultimately, the bones turned out not to be human after all. This story has been difficult for me to cover because it's gut-wrenching. And being on that search with you, when we came across the skeletal remains, what's going through your mind? I didn't want to look, but I knew I had to. Um, it's the first time I've seen bones that looked like they could be human. It was a huge possibility, and that scared me. While Kyron's disappearance remained unsolved, the mystery of Terry Horman deepened. What does Terry do after Kyron's disappearance? She moved away and uh, basically hid out for a little while. Then she attempted to change her name. She had um, figured out a name in a, a murder mystery novel, um, Claire Sullivan, and wanted to change her name to that. It's almost unbelievable. 
Mm -hmm. Yes. This is actual audio of Terry appealing to a circuit court judge to grant the name change. And tell me why you want the name change. I decided that I wanted to start a new life under a new name. Any other reasons? No, sir. You have received some negative attention concerning the Kyron Horman case, and therefore you want to change your name. Is that a fair yes. paraphrase? Mm -hmm. And tell me how it would help. To start over a new life with not having the stigma of Horman attached to it. In the end, the judge denied her request. But as we're just now learning, Terry did go back to using her maiden name, Terry Moulton, which is why until just days ago, few people realized she was arrested in Northern California last August for allegedly stealing a handgun from her roommate. Then after failing to show up for her arraignment, she was arrested again, booked this past July 4th, exactly six years and a month to the day Kyron went missing. And there's more. The restraining order filed just days ago by the man alleging Terry pulled a knife on him, a man who also told the press, quote, something is going to happen to me or my family. Our producers caught up with Kyron's mom, Desiree, by phone to talk about the latest developments. I'm really hoping that she's going to be held accountable for this charge. I believe that if the right things are done, it could lead to answers for us. In fact, since we started following the case, we've had a tons of new developments. We've had new resources dedicated to Kyron's case on the law enforcement side. And so we've had a lot of activity, I would say, in the last six months. And it gives me a new feeling of optimism I haven't had in a long time. Just this September, Kyron's stepmom, Terry, appeared on the Dr. Phil show, where she once again denied having anything to do with his disappearance. I did everything I was ever asked to do. I spoke openly for hours on end with investigators, open book, told them every horrible little dirty secret I ever had in my life, anything that was gonna help to find him, anything. I didn't care. A few days after that appearance, the Multnomah County Sheriff's Department renewed their search for Kyron. It's related to physical evidence in the case and it was initiated by law enforcement and there have actually been several searches. They don't advertise them, but I am informed and they're all acting on solid information and physical evidence in the case. Since the investigation is ongoing, police won't comment on what that evidence might be. But Terry will be in court later this month, both to answer for the domestic violence charge and again on the same day for failing to appear on the gun charge, a crime for which she has since pleaded not guilty. We have tried to get her side of the story, but she's hiding behind attorneys who refuse to comment. Despite Terry Horman's silence, rest assured, Desiree's search for Kyron will continue. But I really feel optimistic this year. I'm, I'm feeling those butterfly feelings in my stomach and I feel like we're getting somewhere and I'm really hoping for answers, you know, whatever that means. I. I'm tired of waiting.